This is Twit. We're really excited to use this forum to share some of the key Google Smart Home updates. In this session, I'll cover the latest product developments around the Works with Google Assistant ecosystem, an update on where we are with the Works with Nest transition, and our perspective on Project Connected Home over IP. Google's no longer a company that just helps you find answers. <laughs> with each product we build, we're focused on helping users get stuff done. In Gmail, for example, we are, use, we are suggesting words to finish sentences. And in Maps, we're helping you find the fastest way home. And in the home, we want to make it more convenient for users to manage their home devices and build upon this foundation towards a helpful home that enables true automation. COVID-19 has impacted us significantly, and everyone is spending a lot more time at home. This lifestyle will likely not change given the convenience of online shopping, video streaming, and remote work. Right now, there's a greater need than ever for us to support the individual needs of people living, working, and learning together under one roof. So I like that focus. let's talk smart home with the latest on the Works with Google Assistant program. As I just mentioned, all of us have been spending a lot more time at home. In fact, many of you may be watching the stream for the comfort of your own home. Based on a recent survey, seven out of 10 of you expect to be continuing this trend for a while. Mm -hmm. With all of us home more often, smart devices are being used a bit more, with the biggest growth coming from entertainment devices. Smart speakers and displays are increasingly being used as a form of entertainment, and connected TVs are becoming the norm, mm -hmm. with over 80% yep. of US TV households having at least one connected TV. Because of the increased use of smart TVs, we're increasing our support for entertainment devices with our smart home API. We're excited to announce the public release of new smart home for entertainment or shed device types and traits, giving users the ability to control their favorite entertainment devices from any assistance surface, mobile, speaker, or display. Shed represents a huge opportunity to expand the assistant capability with smart entertainment devices that users already have in their home. In fact, 40% of those connected TV households use the devices daily, and we've seen this continue to grow since shelter in place went into effect. Last year, we announced Google Assistant support for TVs, remote set-top boxes, speakers, soundbars, and even game consoles from top brands like Xbox, Roku, yeah. Dish, and So LG. these have been around for a little while, but now and they're now going to be even more. And now we're making these APIs public for any TV, set-top box, or game developer to use. With the newly mm. launched Shed traits, an avid gamer can say, hey, gee, play Gears 5 on Xbox hey, or any other games. <laughs> And anyone can relax after a busy day to enjoy sporting events by saying something Jeez. like, hey, G, tune to ESPN, or hey, G, make it louder. There you go. Well, that is what we should be doing the whole time. We invite you to take a look at our shed documentation and start building today. Speaking of spending more time at home, people are finding that it's more important than ever to focus on wellness. And sleep is a critical part in maintaining our overall well-being. Our bodies are designed to wake up and fall asleep based on the presence and absence of natural light. Yet our alarms today are designed to be jarring, interruptive, and unnatural. <laughs> no wonder few of us enjoy waking up to our alarms every morning. Additionally, almost half of U.S. adults say they have trouble sleeping, up from one-third only a few years ago. In an effort you think to she's going to talk about the super chiasmatic nuclei? The natural ebb and flow of light Probably during not. the day, we are launching she just the said everybody's sleep sleeping worse. <laughs> the wake-up feature slowly brightens the alarm, the lights yeah. before your alarm, Allowing this you to is similar to a feature to a that uh, Philips Hue offers out of the box, and uh, Apple has recently announced a similar feature. Different smart lighting platforms have uh, this kind of baked in, but it's nice if you're using one platform like the Google Assistant to control all of your lights to have this work with that. Set it and forget it, or can be evoked for immediate brightening or dimming of your lights. We think this is a powerful new feature that you can bring to your customers. This feature will be launching later this year, and we Can need we your help informing users about it. We also encourage you to integrate or build your own unique experiences leveraging this capability. Okay. But if not, we'll emulate it using a series of brightness and color commands on our end. Over the last two years, to enable a helpful home experience, we focused on foundational features necessary to make it easier for a user to manage their smart device. We started by, emulated, by enabling users to use their voice to control their devices. We added touch controls to allow for device interaction with smart displays, and we continue to build an experience where the assistant is multimodal, where voice and touch complement each other. After seeing the phenomenal touch engagement from like users that. on smart displays and in the Google Home app, we're expanding our touch controls to the OS. And what better way to enable that than with our mobile footprint on Android? With the release of Android 11 coming out later this year, we are introducing a dedicated, persistent space for smart home controls. 
that users yeah, can find. Yes, so we heard about this. I was very excited to hear this because having those controls immediately uh, yeah. is what makes me more more likely to control my smart home, my home kit smart home, uh, rather than using my voice to do it. And so it's good that they're making this available for folks who want to do that instead. It's going to make it really easy to access and it's your devices while on for free development wise. I don't have to do like anything. Being able to unlock That's cool. Your door and turn on the yeah, I've been just using that house. on iOS like today. We'll the new features on iOS 14 because I had to turn my lights on and then it showed up in Control Center. In the morning, or how far, far to open the blinds. This entire OS experience is built on top of the foundation that we've established in the Google Home app. And conveniently for users, they can quickly link back to the home app for deeper device controls Very and advanced nice. capabilities like routines. Finally, we built this by putting user privacy first. Every oh, device must be authenticated mentioned. before nice. it can be used in this mode. And users can even choose to hide <laughs> these controls surprised. from showing up at all until they're authenticated. <laughs> Your business reps can help with more detail, but here are the biggest areas to work on. First of all, marketing. Get the word out about this with emails, notifications, and updating your existing assets. Second, device setup. Please make sure your linking experience is easy with app flip and 3P deep linking. And finally, let's make sure that your device is integrated with all the relevant traits launched globally. This slide here is, is really a, a keen data. example or a, a clear example about how this is a developer focused uh, yeah. summit. But I like app. I like getting a little bit of uh, information about sort of the behind the yeah. scenes state of things. It's like a mix of As the state of the union. Control, it becomes more critical that, to ensure that we have accurate state. Our team is going to be providing tools to measure your reliability and latency that will help you improve, improve and debug state reporting. Once so state reporting is an important feature for smart home uh, tech because it tells the device or the operating system in this case, hey, right now the light is on, it's set to 70% brightness and it is this color of, uh, is this hue. That way yeah. it is always available to the, the operating system and makes it so that when you hit that button, it does the right thing, be it turning on or turning off or dropping the brightness or not. So it reduces latency by properly reporting the state and then it also reduces the error of accidentally turning on or off the light when it is already on or off benefiting users with oh latency local home and sdk by removing yeah, the nice. cloud hop this is what to i was talking about process for ready for the actions that's good. chrome and node.js runtime environments as well as developing building and testing of apps on local development machines or personal servers once you've deployed your local fulfillment app Users will benefit immediately without having to upgrade hardware or manually update firmware. Our local execution solution makes sure smart home just works with real-time control and a seamless developer nice. experience. We're Skip already working the server, with a growing list of do partners. Do things locally. To local, local execution of devices in and with these uh, Nano Leaf, Philips Hue. These are big ones. Tile, yeah. LifeX. Yeah. These are huge. Yeah. Head on over to the developer console today to start to implement local fulfillment for today, your actions. Nice. I'm about to, I'm reading about this high today. Implementing integration is important. It reduces churn and delights users. Yet, yeah, there's this a is critical good. gap to you try to get users to try these, out these use cases. And we're doing a couple of things on our end to increase the funnel of users linked to your action. We are excited to launch AppFlip on the developer console today. With AppFlip, we reduce App the standard Flip. account linking flow to just two steps by flipping users from the Google Home app to the partner app without requiring an additional sign-in. More discovery and linking initiatives This is what soon, so Apple has made a requirement. So there this is why I know about sort of app flip. It makes it so that you don't the have to go and create an account in a third-party app in order to control your lights. You set it up with the Google Home app, and then it kicks you over to the app that you want to use if you want to do independent notifications and things like that without having to create a new separate login and account and authorization. And there's some onboarding too. debugging and early development to detailed analytics and production. To enhance developer productivity, we've integrated with the powerful monitoring and troubleshooting tools available in Google Cloud Platform to provide detailed event logs mm. and usage metrics for smart home projects. We've enhanced project logging in three key areas, local home SDK, account linking, <laughs> and assistant events mm. to help developers debug and resolve issues quickly with Google Cloud logging. You can view and analyze log entries directly in the developer console or build logs-based metrics to find trends and gain deeper insights into common problems. Speaking mm -hmm. of metrics, you'll find a new smart home analytics dashboard accessible from the developer console and pre-populated with charts for common metrics such as daily active users, 
and request breakdown, giving you an overall picture of your integration's behavior. This dashboard this is, is monitored by new usage and performance a, metrics. A less than, Cloud a less than uh, the power to set alerts good. To <laughs> I don't know if you behind the scenes. Yeah. I don't like to think about people knowing how many times I turn on or off a light in my house and that kind of thing. I assume there's some privacy layers, but yeah, it's different. Are familiar with our works with Nest program and the changes that we announced last year. Bye bye I'll Nest. take a few minutes now to share with you our progress <laughs> on the Works with Nest transition and provide an update on what we're doing to create an Nest. ecosystem that offers our partners and developers greater flexibility in creating a helpful home. Last year, we announced our plans to transition Works with Nest to the Works with Google Assistant ecosystem and build on a foundation of privacy and data security to ensure our users have confidence in how Google and our partners are protecting the consumer's home data. Nice. As a result, our users will have more control and transparency over how their data is shared and how our developers will have a simplified experience in delivering home automation. To continue to support Works with Nest partners that have their own smart home platforms and ecosystems, we announced the Device Access Program, enabling qualified partners to use our API to request secure access and control of users' Nest devices within the partners' apps and solutions, providing our mutual customers more choice on how to control their home. For example, a user that owns so a security like system can choose to opt you. their Nest thermostats on other and smart home yes. devices so they can be viewed as, and controlled good, via the security system provider app as long as that partner is part of the device access program. All device access partners must pass an annual security assessment from one of our good. authorized testers as well as agree to the terms of service. Users are always in control and choose which Nest products they want to share with the partner. To support the device access program, we will soon launch the device access console. This console will be available for both individuals and commercial developers. As a commercial developer, the console allows you to manage your various projects and integrations. It also provides development guides and trait documentation for all supported Nest devices. The self-serve console guides you through the different project phases, development, certification, and pilot testing, and finally production. In each stage, we ensure that our mutual user privacy and security is maintained. Individuals who want to create their own automations with their Nest devices will now be able to do so with this console, but will be restricted to a limited number of structures and users. One that's of the that's good to know. So it's so both for developers to test it, but also for those individuals who want to uh, set up we'll integrations themselves, which is something that I had done in the past with Google Nest, or with Nest rather, uh, the Nest Cam. Nest and third-party ecosystem partner products Pre react when users are home or yeah. away. Users can select which Nest and mobile devices are used to collect the data that determines home away status. For instance, when the sensors indicate so that it's clearly really transparency home, that's and happening here, a very clear and easy way to tell what vacuum. is tracking also, my location, what is not tracking my location, and what is controlling and not controlling. That's good because in the past it could be kind of confusing about which app it was using or which service it was using to track the, that information. This kind of puts it all in one place and gives you more control over it. Another way that you'll be able to innovate on our platform and provide more helpful experiences to users is by extending automatic and user-created routines with custom partner routines. The most innovative works with Nest integrations were built by our third-party partners. So we'll be recreating that capability by enabling partners to build custom routines. Developers will be able to create and suggest routines, not just for their devices, Is this but still routines a Nest that part? their devices can work with other devices in the customer's home. So. Okay. You'll be mm, able to create yep. solutions for your customers Works with Google Assistant. your core business and value to your consumers, <laughs> WWGA. whether it's wellness, yeah. cleaning, entertainment, security, it's up to you. Users will be able to opt, browse and opt into approved routines and to choose to have Nest and other devices react and participate in that routine. Nice. This developer capability is being built with security and privacy at its core. There's no need for partners to access user personal information or device data since the routine is managed by the assistant. We'll also protect users and partners alike by limiting device actions to just certain device categories that are non-security or privacy related. Hmm. We're still building the infrastructure to enable these experiences. So please stay tuned for more on custom partner routines that will be coming later this year. So now I'd like to give you a Here we go, on what we're doing with Project Connected Home over IP. <laughs> <Our> chip. <laughs> While smart home devices are abundant, the lack of an industry-wide connectivity standard leaves people confused and frustrated while trying to understand what they need to make their Zigbee, home smart. Zigbee, Z-Wave, Bluetooth, what are we using? It also places a heavy burden yeah. on manufacturers to make sure that their devices are compatible with the various ecosystems spending versus spending precious resources on their core competencies. 
That's why back in December 2019, we announced that we're forming a working group together with Amazon, Apple, and the Zigbee Alliance to develop and drive adoption of a new smart home connectivity standard. This initiative is called Project Connected Home over IP. This happens and so often. And intends to solve the protocol fragmentation it's issue. It's another protocol, yeah. Similar to how USB evolved to become a plug-and-play yeah. connectivity standard, this initiative aims to give consumers the choice of which connected home ecosystem, whether it's Google Assistant, Alexa, HomeKit, or another, oh, that they want their smart the home thing. products to be able to participate <laughs> in. This means that device manufacturers can build a single product to one standard this is and so stay good, on though. cost and time to market mm-hmm. with one protocol to implement, which has broad compatibility. A key aspect a of the effort is use of IP right as a foundational building block in the standard. Today, there's no widely adopted open standard for smart home, which is built upon IP. And yet IP is the protocol of the internet as the most common network layer used in our homes and offices. Mm-hmm. Because of the unique ability for IP to bring together disparate network technologies, IP is an ideal way to deliver end-to-end security and privacy and communication between a device and another device or an app or service. This protocol will run on IP networks like Wi-Fi, Thread for low power mesh, and Bluetooth for device commissioning. Interesting. Thread We're a is still a part of it. We're a big believer in this new connectivity standard. We've not only mm-hmm. open sourced and contributed technologies like Weave, we are actively involved Weave in Weave came from Nest. Life integrating it into our products and working with partners to deliver this simpler this experience so to our customers. As Project Connected Home over IP's initial specification gets released in late 2020, we will have more information on how we'll tie into works with Google Assistant. In the meantime, nothing changes for our existing smart home developer program. Your current smart home products will continue to work with a mm-hmm. Google Assistant, and we encourage you to keep innovating using t- technologies that are available today, like the Smart Home API and the Local Home SDK. If you'd like to get involved, if that or means updates, they'll handle the updates when they eventually come. Com. If you're already integrated with Google, that would make sense. Yeah, that is a good question. I was on the Connected Home uh, website this morning, and there's not a whole lot uh, new that we haven't already seen. We now have integrations with thousands of partners covering all the major connected product categories and devices, and have embarked on an ambitious project to build deeper in-home integrations through our leadership in Project Connected Home over IP. Together, we are on track to deliver well. the most comprehensive and mm-hmm. robust set of smart home capabilities I mean, for our mutual Google, users so. <laughs> with privacy and security at the core. Interestingly, Stay Apple didn't cover this at the Worldwide Developers Conference, really anything about Pchoi that I saw. Sharing your feedback with us it's not out yet, though, so that's not Apple's style. With other smart home developers yeah, I guess Reddit later in 20... Well, AirPlay was Twitter, announced, or the Air Charger thingy was announced long before it ever came out. Well, that didn't... They learned their lesson there. That, folks, was the uh, the end of the, oh. the keynote. Uh, okay. Up next on the Achieving. agenda is yeah is a break, and then uh, they're going to have a, a sort of panel discussion uh, to talk about how COVID nineteen has impacted business and uh, just a, an overall conversation about the smart home industry. It-